Hello and welcome to another Learn lesson within the A-Level Biology for Free lessons with Miss Estrek. So the next one in this series is disaccharides and that is the second lesson within biological molecules. So get yourself some paper ready. We will be starting with a quiz this time to see what you can remember from the first lesson. So get ready to pause on the next slide. So here's your mini quiz to start. So can you, from memory, draw alpha glucose, beta glucose, name three monosaccharides, and then define a monomer and polymer? So hopefully you have got a diagram showing your alpha glucose. Beta glucose only differences on carbon one. The hydroxyl is now on top instead of on the bottom. Three monosaccharides that you need to know are glucose, fructose, and galactose. The definition of a monomer is that it's a smaller unit which can create larger molecules. And a polymer is made up of lots of monomers bonded together. So that recaps the last lesson. Today we're going on to disaccharides. So we'll learn the three that you need to know and how we actually go from having a monosaccharide to two bonded together to make a disaccharide. So that's the first thing, disaccharide, di meaning two, is two monosaccharides bonded together. The bond is called a glycosidic bond and the reaction that joins them is called a condensation reaction. And we'll be looking at that in um, a couple of minutes. So the three that you need to know are maltose, lactose, and sucrose. You need to know those three as examples and also these word equations. And I've highlighted what all three of these word equations have in common. So all three of these disaccharides contain one molecule of glucose. So maltose is glucose plus glucose. Lactose is glucose plus galactose. Easy one to remember because it has lactose in the name. And glucose plus fructose makes sucrose. The other thing that all three have in common is when those two monosaccharides bond together to create the disaccharide, it releases a molecule of water. So all three word equations have plus water at the end. So let's have a look then at how we create these disaccharides. So we said it's by a condensation reaction, and those reactions you'll see come up over and over again in the biological molecules topic, because it's how you join two molecules together, and when you do so, water is removed. It is reversible, and the reverse is hydrolysis, or to help you remember what the reaction is, pronounce it hydrolysis. Hydro, meaning water, Lysis in biology means to split something apart. So a hydrolysis or hydrolysis reaction is splitting apart molecules through the addition of water. So we're going to have a look at a condensation reaction then to create a disaccharide. So we have two monosaccharides here. Very simplified version though, just showing the carbon ring and the oxygen within that hexagon. We have also got the hydroxyl on carbon one here and carbon four. And that's because these are what are gonna be involved in the reaction and the bonds that's created. So we said a condensation reaction is joining two molecules together through the removal of water. So this is where the water comes from, a hydrogen within the hydroxyl and then the full hydroxyl on the other. So if we take that water out, we're then left with these two bonded together via an oxygen. So carbon, oxygen, carbon, and water has been removed. So we've created now a disaccharide, and we've now got a bond holding the two monosaccharides together, and we call this a glycosidic bond. The numbers in front, so a one to four glycosidic bond, that is to describe the location of the bond. So it's found between carbon one and carbon four. And if you haven't watched the monosaccharides video yet, go back one and watch that so you can see how we actually number the carbons within our carbohydrates. Now we did say that hydrolysis is the reverse. So you can hydrolyze this disaccharide back into the two monosaccharides by adding the water back in. And if we do that, we then go back to our monosaccharides. 
So if we then put in another set of questions here, and we'll do some stretch and challenge here, applying this new knowledge, but we're going to link it back to what you can remember from GCSE. So your two questions are, first of all, during which process are polymers hydrolyzed into, in the body into monomers? So think what you learned at GCSE, we have large molecules or polymers, which are hydrolyzed into the monomers. And then the second question is, what is it that catalyzes those hydrolysis reactions? So pause the video, have a think, and then press play when you're ready for the answers. So number one, digestion, you might have gone for that. So digestion is when you have large insoluble molecules, such as starch, and they are broken down, or now we can use the term hydrolyzed, into small soluble molecules, such as glucose. You might not have used this term if you went for this idea, but glycogenolysis, or glycogen lysis, is the splitting of glycogen back into glucose. And that's what will be occurring if your blood sugar levels drop low. And what catalyzes these reactions? Of course, enzymes. So enzymes are our biological catalysts, and they are responsible for those hydrolysis reactions. So in summary, a disaccharide is two monosaccharides bonded together, and they're held together by a glycosidic bond. A condensation reaction is the joining together of molecules through the removal of water. A disaccharide is created through a condensation reaction. Hydrolysis is how molecules can be split apart through the addition of water. And the three disaccharides that you needed to know were maltose, sucrose and lactose. So that's the end of the disaccharides. You can either click back on to the monosaccharide video if you want to just look over that again, or jump ahead to the polysaccharides to learn the next stage. You could always go on to the practice or test stage though if you're ready.